Welcome to Dotloop Support. Today we're going to be going over how to edit PDF documents using our document editor. You are able to add documents into your loops a few different ways. You have the ability to add PDF documents from your computer, you can upload them and store them in your templates section, or you can also email them into the loop. For the purpose of this exercise, I'll be adding a PDF from my computer. To do this, I'll first click on Add Document and then choose Computer from the three options available. A window will appear for your computer that you can search and select the document that you would like to upload. Once you select the document that you would like to put in your loop, select it and it will be uploaded into the loop. You'll then see the name of the document in the folder that you added it into. Simply click on the name of the document to open up the document editor for that document. As soon as you open the document editor, you'll notice that the PDF is essentially an image of the document that you have uploaded. We can't change the printed information on the PDF, but we will be able to place dot loop interactive fields on top of the document and it will allow for us to use this document in dot loop. You'll also notice your dot loop toolbar at the top of the screen. You have various buttons there that you can press to interact with the document editor. Starting on the top left and going to the right, we have your back button, which would take you back to the loop that you put this document in. Next to that is the Save button, which will save any progress that you have made on your document. Next, we'll come to the Messages icon for this specific document. This is an area that will contain all messages that were sent with or about this document. The messages could be sent from agents to clients, giving instructions, or admins to agents letting them know what needs to be corrected to reach compliance. The next few buttons that we'll be going over will actually allow us to interact and add fields to the document. The document editor will automatically show you Add Signature and Add Text, as those are some of the more frequently used buttons on the editor. However, if you hover your mouse over other actions, you're going to get a larger list of available options. We'll start by adding a text box. By clicking on the button Add Text, the document editor will give you a text box that will follow your mouse to wherever you want to take it. The only exceptions will be when trying to place a field on top of another or outside the parameters of the page. When you want to place the field down, go ahead and click. If we accidentally placed the field in the wrong spot, no worries. We can move fields that we have already placed by taking our mouse to any side of the box. You'll notice that your mouse will turn into a four-way arrow when it's hovering over the side of the box. That will inform you that when you click and hold, the box will move with it. Release the mouse click to place the box again. You can also change the size of the field that you have clicked on by clicking and holding on the triangle in the bottom right hand corner of the field. You can make the field as large or as small as you want. You'll notice the mouse turns into a two-way arrow informing you that by clicking you can change the field size. After placing or clicking on a text box, you'll get another toolbar at the top of the editor. This toolbar will be specific to the field that you have clicked on. Starting on the left, we have our Assignment tool. This can be used to assign fields directly to people in the loop so that when they receive the document with the ability to sign, the field will be preserved for them only. If we assign the field to someone else other than ourself, anyone, or no one, it will no longer let us type into the field and you will get a red circle with a line through it when your mouse is on the field. After the assignment tool, you'll have a number of different text options. First, you'll see the font options. As of right now, we have serif, sans serif, and mono spaced to choose from. Next, you'll have your font sizes to choose from. If your text box is too small, then some of the larger font sizes may be grayed out. Next, we have three different ways to align your text in text box. Align left, 
align center, and align right. Those will simply align your text inside the field to whichever choice you select. Over here, you can make the text bold, italicized, or add a strike through inside the field by using these buttons. Next to those options, you have a choice of text color. There is black or blue to choose from. We could also add a highlighted color to the field. There are a few different choices as far as the colors go. We also have the ability to add clauses that you have entered into your template section prior to working on the document. You can add a clause to any text field as long as it is big enough to hold the clause that you are going to add. This could save you a lot of time if you often use certain clauses. There is also a tool on here to make text boxes transparent. So if we were to place a text box over a field of information, we have the ability to make the box transparent so we can see what is located underneath it. The last icon on that toolbar is the Remove Field button. This can be used to delete any field that you have placed, whether it is a signature box, initial box, or text box. Any field can be deleted that way. Now let's say we need to have some people sign on this PDF document that we have just uploaded and are currently working on. If you look back up to the top on the editor, you'll see the Add Signature button. By clicking on the Add Signature button, it will give you a box that will follow around your mouse like the text option. We can place these wherever we want besides on the top of other fields already on the PDF. By default, both the signature and initial boxes will be assigned to anyone. If you don't change this, then you could potentially have people signing in all of the fields since we don't have fields assigned to certain people. Here we have the ability to assign these fields to specific people or specific roles inside of the loop. Go up to the Assignment tool on the left side of your toolbar where it says Assigned to Anyone. By holding your mouse over the box, it will give you the list of people that are in your loop or your choice of roles available to assign people to. By assigning a field to a role, it is allowing anyone who has been given that role the ability to complete that field. This way, you don't have to assign the field to specific people and can't let either of your clients sign in either of the spots, given you have identified their roles in the loop. The assignment of fields can be changed whenever you want to change them before they are signed. Again, it's very important to assign fields directly to the people that need to fill them out so that they can actually complete those fields when they get the document and so people don't sign the incorrect spots. Let's say you're adding fields and assigning them in the document and you get the information for another person in the loop. The last choice on the assignment tool is to add a person. By using this, you can add another person into the loop using their full name, email, and you can also give them their role. Let's say there are going to be some signature fields that your clients are not going to sign and you don't want them to sign. We will want to make sure that those fields are not assigned to them or anyone, so we can assign them to no one to make sure they are not signed. We have the ability to select both fields at the same time, two ways. You can click on one field, hold the shift key, and then click on the other field. Or you can click and drag your mouse around the fields and highlight them both with an outlined box. What we can do is group these fields together and then change the assignment of the fields and they will both change at the same time. Once you have both fields selected at the same time, you'll see the grouping tool, which looks like four squares next to each other. By clicking on that button, you're telling Dotloop to group those fields together. You can tell that they are grouped when the squares turn white. If we were to then click on one of those fields and then change the assignment in that box to a role, such as buyers, both of those fields will then be assigned to buyers. If the field says no one after assigning it to buyers, then that means you currently do not have anyone with the role of buyer in your loop. 
If you did have buyers in your loop, then the field would say assigned to buyers, and if you hover your mouse over the field, then it will let you know which people are able to sign there given their role. This is important for when you share the document over to the other agent who is also using dot loop. If that agent's clients are identified as buyers in their loop, then as soon as the agent shares the document to the client, they would be able to sign because the fields are assigned to buyers already. If the buying agent has their roles listed correctly, it will show the names of the buyers in those fields rather than no one if you don't have their information. Now we'll talk about initial fields. Go up to Other Actions and select your first option, Add Initials. These work the same way as the signature fields. You can place them in the same way that you can place signature fields. After you select Add Initials or any other tool under Other Actions, it will add a temporary button next to Add Signature and Add Text so that you can conveniently access the same tool over and over again if need be. There are a few things to mention when you are placing initial fields. Right after you place the field, you have the option to assign the field to a person or sign as yourself. When assigning that initial field to someone else, placeholder initials will appear for them until they actually sign that document. That is not their actual initials being signed on the document. If you select a different tool that you're using from the Other Actions menu, the new tool that you just used will replace the one you had used previously. Now let's try adding a checkbox. By clicking on Add Checkbox, a checkbox will follow your mouse like the other fields. You can check, uncheck, or assign the checkbox to a specific person if you are needing them to check different options on a document. Next are radio buttons. These can be used when you have multiple choice answers on a document where perhaps a client has to choose one or the other and cannot choose both. Radio boxes can be used here, and by grouping the boxes together, you can select which boxes you want to have the client choose between. You'll notice after grouping these radio boxes together that if you try to choose a different option after selecting one initially, the original box will uncheck, making sure that only one option can be chosen. We also have a strike through button, which will give you a strike through that you can place over text that is on the PDF that you have uploaded. This could be useful in case you need to strike through an old purchase price on a document that the clients have agreed to change. Much like the other fields, you can make the strike through longer by clicking on the right of it and dragging your mouse. Each strike through serves as one line of text. You would need multiple lines to strike through a paragraph. If you're looking to strike through text that is in a text box, you would want to use the strike through text option for the text in that field. That will strike through all the text on that given field. Next on the Other Actions list is going to be the Save as Template option. This feature is explained a little more in our Apply as Template article, but essentially what this tool will do is save the framework for this interactive document that you have created on top of the PDF, and you can reuse the setup of the interactive fields on further documents. So if this arrangement of fields is used numerous times on similar documents that you'll need to set up, you can save this framework and apply it to however many other documents that you need to apply it to. That essentially covers everything that you need to know about the PDF document editor. There are a couple of tips I'd like for you to know before ending the video. First, always remember to save every so often, perhaps every page. Nothing is worse than losing hours worth of work due to your internet dropping out or your computer losing power. Also, make sure to have the fields within the outline of the page. It won't actually let you place fields outside of the margins, but you always want to give yourself enough room to work with.